Good morning. God bless your life. Thank you for tuning in to the Revival Center at Cincinnati. We are now preparing for worship. I'm not sure about you, but today I feel such an, an unusual anointing. I feel the love of the Father even this morning. Even during my prayer time and my thoughts with God this morning, uh, the Lord began to really, really do some things in my spirit, and I believe he's about to to allow us to feel such an outpouring of his spirit in this house today. Stay tuned in. Be ready. Have a spirit of expectation that God can do whatever he wants to do. So I'm just here to say thank you again for tuning in to the Revival Center at Cincinnati. Enjoy the word today. Enjoy the worship. Make sure that you share this, that you share this with all your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Invite followers. Give us hearts. Give us hearts. Let us know that you are enjoying the worship. Amen. God bless your life. See you soon. name of 
of Jesus, God. Oh, God, we want nothing more than you and your presence of God alone, oh, God. For it is your anointing that destroys yokes, God. God, we incline our ear up to you, God, the frequency of heaven, God. We want to be in sync with heaven, oh, God. We never want to be out of step with you, oh, God. So, God, we ask that you just... Give us a fresh wind. Send the holy tsunami, God. Send the wind, the fire, and the rain. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, send your wind to blow on us, God. To blow anything out of our lives that you have not said, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rahu shakebe shakoratike. Rakate go rakishe koramatike. Rashikate kusha. And God sent the rain to wash us, wash us white in the snow.
Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Inhabit our worship and inhabit our praise. We are so grateful for you, Father. Jesus, come say, come Lord 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 Jesus
each other in love. Amen. Hallelujah. Why are you greeting each other? We want to welcome you on Periscope. Our Periscope members, our Periscope people. Hallelujah. You can reach us on Periscope at the Revival Center. On Facebook at the Revival Center. Hallelujah. So come on. Come on.
fear and begin to talk to him and tell him how much you love him. Oh yes, I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you.
God brings over our seed. Amen, church? So on the count of three, I want you on the count of three to jump to your feet and give God a shout over your seed because God is going to take your little and make it much. Amen, church? So on the count of three, let's give God praise for what he's going to do. One, two, three. Somebody shout.
together. Somebody say amen. We got something going on and lights dying and stuff, amen. We need more Just of God. Just. Amen. But we need more of God. It's ringing a little bit still, guys. Um, we need more of God. Yeah, up here. We need more of God. Matthew chapter 15. again say thank you to everyone being here today everyone being you'll get it thank you to everyone thank you to everyone being here today I'd like it to be a little loud so I don't have to yes. holler but I don't this is where it was just without all the extra. You know what I mean? We go, ah, that's a little better right there. We getting it. Somebody say amen. amen. Modern technology. You got people that got to be in the back. People need to be in the front with iPads and stuff. But we're going to get it. Matthew chapter 15. Chapter 15. This is, uh, yes, I can work with this. Huh? Uh, a little bit, but not much. Can you guys hear me out there? <coughs> it's not in the house. Okay, you gotta turn me down up here a little bit because now it's peaking. But then we need it more in the house. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. So, yeah, turn me up in the house. Can you guys hear me in the house? You guys hear me good? Amen. Thank you for being so patient. But the Lord is kind, and I promise you. He is already here and blessing us. He's going to bless us some more. Amen. So good to see all of you. You can smile at me now. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Amen. To all of our visitors and repeat visitors that come on a weekly basis, we appreciate it. We love seeing faces. Um, if you're a part of the Revival Center at Cincinnati, stand up. If you're growing with us, stand up. YouTube, stand up. Thank you. And I want you to turn to our visitors and just wave at them and say, thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming today. Tell them, tell them, thank you for coming today. <laughs> She's already claiming folks to grow with us. Speaking a little bit again, I don't know what's changing. Yes, I don't know what's changing. We're not going to have any distractions with the words going for Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Yeah, now we're good. Verse 21, when you have it, say amen. amen. If it's your custom to stand, you can stand. Um, um, you can if you like. Matthew chapter 15, page 21. And it reads, Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district, and I'm reading from the New American Standard, uh, Tira and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from the region came out and began to cry out, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. But he, somebody say, but he, he, did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and implored him, saying, send her away because she keeps shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Somebody say, but she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, what does it say? Help me. And he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O oh woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. 
look at somebody and say, however I can get it, I'll take it. I don't do topics, but that just dropped in my spirit. However I can get it, I'll take it. Ah, oh, it's sick of to hold. We'll find us somebody else and say, however I can get it, I'll take it. See, you ain't got it yet, because you would say it with some authority if you had it. Tell them again, however I can get it. However I can get it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Lord, She by, I'll take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take that. Take that. Take that. Take that. That just shifted me. I didn't. That was the Holy Ghost. I don't even do topics. However, I can get it. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Lord, I'll take that. Yeah, I'm good. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Thank you. Woo! It's interesting because many of us are in position to receive. No, it's not. Many of us are at a place to where we can receive, but are we really in position to get what we need? Because oftentimes we're in a place we need to be, but our posture and how we're acting is different than what our place is. For my animals, when there's no food in their bowl, go to the bowl and they'll sit and they'll wait. They'll come and get me. They'll run back to the bowl. But sometimes I'll walk in the house and I'll feed them and nobody's around. And they're hungry, but they're not in position to receive. Too often many of us are in, we know we're hungry, but we're not in the place we need to be. Do I have anybody in here tonight, today, that can say, God, I'm ready to be in position? Oh, I wish I had one church. I got to holler at us, I guess, to make us move, but I'm not. Tell them, I'm, I'm ready for this because clearly what I've done is not working. Clearly, how I've acted is not working. Clearly, the things that I've done and the way I'm set up to act is not working. But I switch my position now. I shift my attitude. I shift my thinking. I shift my way that I'm in position with God. And the Bible says, watch this, that without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if it is impossible to please him without faith, how are we in the right position but we have no faith? We believe that God is. But do we have faith to walk in what he told us to do? Hello, church. Y'all must want me to holler. It's all right. I'm not, you know. You know, we believe in God. But really, does your action say, I have faith that you're going to do what you told me you were going to do? So even if I'm hungry at six, but there's nothing in the bowl at six, do I have enough faith in God that he's still going to feed me even though I'm hungry now? Oh, I ain't got no believers. Y'all ain't following me yet. You know, sometimes God allows things to happen in our life to see if we really have faith or not. My God. You know, sometimes things happen and God is sitting there saying, I'm right here with you. But do you have faith that I'll deliver you if it comes? Watch. The Bible says no weapon formed against me shall what? But that means a weapon has to form. But many of us are led to believe that no weapons will form. But it's not the fact, yes, I'm a little thrown off by your weapon, but the promise says whatever forms won't work. 
Oh, I wish I had a church. Which means things are going to come against you. Things are, why am I, this ain't even here. Things are going to attack you, but the promise is this. It won't work. Somebody shout, it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. So let me let me get to our text because I'm feeling good early, you know, and, and and I like it because in the beginning of our text we 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 got to understand here that the Bible says that Jesus went away from where he was and he withdrew somewhere else and watched and it says and a Canaanite woman came from a region she came from where she was and she began to cry out. So I said to the Lord, I said. Lord, what is the significance of her being a Canaanite? And I began to do some research, but and I found that it was the Canaanites that had to be destroyed when Israel came out of bondage because it was the Canaanites that was in the land that they were promised full of milk and honey. And it was the Canaanites that were in the place in the Old Testament that Israel was promised, um, that Israel was promised by God. So the Israel now had a mandate from God that when they get to where they're going to get, they're going to have to destroy the Canaanites because the Canaanites, let me tell you, the Canaanites had possessed the land for hundreds of years, but it was promised to Israel. You know, some, let me, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody sitting in your house right now, making the payments, building on the extra part of your house that you, so you won't have to spend the money on it. Somebody is in your house right now fixing it up so that when God give it to you, it'll be what you need it to be. Oh, I ain't got no church. Y'all, y'all don't like y'all. I'm preaching to myself. Somebody, see, somebody got your car right now fixing it up and adding the new radio and the new and the new speakers and the new lights and they're adding all the, the luxury to your car right now because God said, I promised it to you, but I gave it to them so that they can be there and fix it up for you. I wish I had a church here today that can declare uh, you might be in my last mind right now, but just give me a little more time, you know. So, so, so Israel has to go and take what God has promised them, and they do just that. They had some moral failures, but I said, Lord, they had to destroy them because there was so much wickedness. The Canaanites were practicing witchcraft. They were practicing. I even found out that they were sacrificing babies. I even found out that they were in sorcery and, and idols. And don't, that, don't that sound like America? Jesus, have mercy. You know, they were involved with all this stuff. Look at somebody and say, we better get out of that stuff. We better, we better get out of that stuff. You know, they were involved with with all this stuff and God said they have to be destroyed they have to be destroyed somebody say destroyed they have to be destroyed. They have to be destroyed. And you can find that in Deuteronomy. And let me also tell you that in Canaan also stood the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, many of us know the story about Sodom and Gomorrah and God destroyed the city. So now if you get back to the text, we have a woman. She is a Canaanite. Thank you. A woman and she is a Canaanite and she's looking to Jesus for what she needs. Now, this is interesting because if she look in her history, if she look at her past, her people were destroyed because God said they're wicked and they're perverse. They're wicked. So somehow, somehow in her mind, she said, despite what my people have done in the past, I still got to get to Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't got me yet. Uh, despite what my mama used to do, I still still got to get to Jesus because I need a change in my life. You know, uh, somebody said, well, there's some curses on my bloodline. I'm here to declare over my bloodline today that everything has got to cut because I need Jesus in my life. Uh, uh, yes, I'm getting excited early. Do I have a church here today that can say, if nobody else is willing to change my bloodline, I'm willing to get to Jesus to make a change. If nobody else in my family is willing to do what's right and live holy, I'm willing to do it so that my 
problem can be fixed. Uh, uh, anybody in here today, you're willing to do it despite everything around you. So this Canaanite woman is now before this great God. She's before Jesus and she's coming to him with a problem. And she's saying to him, the Bible says here, that the Canaanite woman from the region came out and began to cry out, saying, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. Oh, uh, yes, he, she, she's got a problem. She's got an issue. She's got something going on, and she recognizes that the one that can shift her life is sitting in front of her. Oh, God, I wish that we as people of God can recognize that you Yes, we have problems, and I'm peeking again. Yes, we have problems, but I got a God that I can go to that can shift everything around me. Uh, do I have a church in here today that can say I won't take it for granted when I come into God's house and I feel his presence? I won't take it for granted that when I come into God's house, I can feel his presence because it's in his presence where there is fullness of joy. It's in his presence where I can get what I need. Uh, yes, God, slap your neighbor for the first time and say, neighbor, you better get to Jesus. 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 So the Bible says uh, that she said, have mercy on me, Lord. Uh, yes, son of David. It's, it's awesome because of her, of her background and who she is. She took it upon herself to still call him Lord. You know, even though who she was says you don't deserve to be around Jesus, who you are, you don't deserve it, who you are, you don't deserve to really be connected with God. You know, you don't deserve to walk in the blessings that He has for you. You don't deserve it, but she still said, Lord, have mercy on me, son of David. So she had a new mindset because she said, I am in position to get what I need. And while I'm here waiting at the bowl to be fed, while I'm here, I might as well get the one that can feed me. Do I have anybody here that say, Lord, I'm desperate enough to get rid of everything that was attached to me just to get a word from you? Somebody in here shout, I need a word, Lord. I need a word, Lord. I need a word, Lord, and the Bible says, but he did not answer her a word. Uh, and his disciples came and implored him, saying, send her away because she keeps shouting. Uh, he did not say a word. She had a request, but he did not say a word. She had a problem, but Jesus did not say a word. She had an issue, but Jesus did not say a word. Anybody in here ever felt like they were praying, but God wasn't hearing your cry. Oh God, I wish I had somebody that can tell the truth. Anybody in here that can say, I've been going through some stuff, but I just feel like I can't get a prayer answered. You know, I've been dealing with some stuff and I just can't see a change in my life. I've been dealing with some situations. My finances are still messed up. They're still funny. They're still not doing. I'm paying my tithe and I'm doing everything that you're telling me to do, but I don't hear a word from you. Anybody ever been at a place where you felt like I've reached rock bottom and I still can't find the Lord. I, I've reached a low point in my life. People are talking about me. People are walking away from me. I feel like I'm by myself. I feel like I'm hurt. I feel like I'm nothing and everybody else is gone and now I can't find the Lord. Oh God, I wish I had some real folk in here. You know, now I can't find him. I'm struggling. I'm dealing with this and I'm praying and crying, but Jesus is not hearing me. Uh, can I tell you that we as people of God, we have to learn to pray without ceasing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you got to learn to pray uh, and you got to learn to keep praying uh, and you got to learn it by faith. Uh, it's already done in my life. Uh, can you slap your neighbor for the second time and say, God is already working this out. I ain't got time to complain to you about it, Lindsay. I want to sometime, but I can't complain to you sometime because I got 
faith that God is going to work out my situation. I got faith that God is going to work it out for me because I know who he is. And as long as I know he is, I know he'll deliver me right on time. Oh, who was it? Dottie Peoples, I think she said, he's an on time God. She said, oh yes he is. Which means he may not come when you want him, but he'll be right. Oh, I thought I had a church, you know. So she probably watch what we see here. And she teaches us because when Jesus doesn't respond to her, and, uh, the Bible says, but it says, um, the, watch, it says the disciples said, send her away because she keeps shouting at us. I thought it was interesting that Jesus didn't respond, but his boys did. Jesus didn't respond but somebody else did Jesus didn't respond Lindsay but somebody else spoke for him can I tell you you can say what you will about me jumping and shouting in church because I ain't crying out to you you can say what you will about my dance and my shout I don't even care because who I'm shouting to is not even you I wish I had a church slap your neighbor a high five and say I ain't shouting out to you I'm calling to the Lord oh thou son of David the Bible the Bible the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that when blind Bartimaeus knew Jesus yeah. was coming, the Bible says after they told him to hush, that the Bible said that he shouted or he cried out the more. Anybody got to cry out the more praise in here? Anybody got to cry out the more shout in here? Uh, that you can say, I don't care what you say or how you do it. I'm going to shout because I need a change. I'm going to shout because I need the God of my salvation. Salvation. So baby, excuse me while I jump on my feet and shout because I need a change on the count of three. You better jump and shout one, two, three. I need something different and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get there. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get what I need. So now she's in need and Jesus is ignoring her and the disciples is telling her to get away. Uh, telling her to get away. You got to tell some of your haters, shut up sometime, you know, because I ain't even talking to you. Uh, how we used to say it back in the day, talk to the hand because of... Uh, Oh, talk to the white side because the black side ain't listening. You know, I ain't talking to you. Shut your mouth. You know, you can't hinder my praise. You can't hinder this shout. You can't hinder this praise. Why? Because I know that if I praise him, I will get him where I am. Uh, uh, do I have anybody in here? I done got excited and got ahead of myself. Do I have anybody in here that will declare in the face of the devil that even though I don't hear God right now, I still believe? Uh, do I have anybody to say I still got faith uh, that God is going to save me from my situation? Uh, but it cried out the more. I got a little ways to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, God. So can I slow down a little bit? But watch. He said, but he answered and said, watch. Now Jesus answers her. Watch. They said something and Jesus shut them down and he acknowledged her. But Jesus said to her, watch what he says. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He began to tell her, I'm not even here for you. I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. I was sent. Somebody said he was sent. To the lost sheep of Israel, he was sent. He, she said, watch this. She said, but she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help. So when Jesus answered her, he said, I wasn't here. I didn't come for you. I didn't come for you. She said, well, that's all right. I'm going to still worship you despite who you're here for. Oh, God, I wish I had a church. I know you're here to heal Mary, but I need a little bit of that healing, too. Uh, yes, God, I know you're here to bless Bridget and give her a house and give her what she needs, but I need a little bit of that, too. I know you're here to heal and touch bodies and get raises on the job, but I need a little bit of that, too. Do I have anybody that's willing to say, Lord, I'll worship you until you bless me? Jeez, I'll give you glory until you turn my situation around. I'll bless you. I'll clap my hands until you make a change. I'll shout hallelujah until you do something that I need. 
So the Bible says that she worshipped. Uh, she worshipped him. And she said, Lord, help me. Uh, do I have anybody in here tonight that can shout, Lord, help me. Help me. Uh, oh, yes, Lord. Lord, help me. I like that position. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. 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 But watch. Jesus now responds to her. And he says, um, um, he says, and he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. So, so when I first read this in my mind, I said, Jesus, you're being awfully disrespectful, you know. I said, you're being a little scandalous. Here you go call her a dog, you know. And I said, this is interesting. This is interesting, but I began, see, sometimes you got to dig in the word, you know, you got to get in there and you got to start dealing with some stuff that ain't in English, you know what I mean? So I start trying to figure out because I realized that he called her a dog and I said, Lord, how dare you call her a dog? And he began to show me, he said, the only dog you think of, women, is stray dogs, you know, you think of crazy, vicious dogs that are running around. So I began to do some research and I found out here that the, what Jesus is saying to her and what he was not saying to her in the Greek, the word is kion or kion. I don't speak Greek, but I'll, I'll study it, you know. It's either kion or kion, and this here is a term of reproach. This type of dog is the same dog that was mentioned in Revelations here. Somebody say Revelations. This type of dog was also mentioned in Revelation here. Um, yeah, and it was mentioned, and it was meaning dog talking about evil dogs you know dogs that are evil they're stray dogs but that is not what Jesus was saying to her here he was not literally calling her a dog or a stray dog but when I began to do it and realize that Jesus in the Greek the word he was using was kynarion and kind that I'm not saying that right uh -huh. kynarion and this word means little dog uh, look at somebody say it means little dog um, so, so now, because, you know, we've been taught that Jesus was disrespectful to her, but I'm about to tear that religious mess down, you know. He was not calling her some dumb puppy or, or some, 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 some crazy type of dog, you know, running down the street. But Jesus was calling her a little dog. And in this term, this word little dog did not mean stray. But this term little dog simply meant somebody's house pet. Now, if it means somebody house pet, that means this dog is treated differently than a stray dog. Yep. Oh, y'all ain't got me yet. You'll get me here in a second. So what Jesus was saying by calling her a dog, he was saying to her, he said, I did not come. He said, I don't know, but she came and he says, and he answered, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Watch. Now, in the New International Version, it says this. It says, it is not good that he toss it to their dogs. Somebody say, their dogs. Their dogs. T-H-E-I-R. Their dogs. So now, there's a different position. So now the dogs have to have some ownership. Somebody now owns the dog. And I don't know about you, but the animals that I have live in luxury, you know, only because I'm living blessed, so they live in blessed. Oh, y'all ain't got no pets. It's all right. And I seen you take care of a dog. I know, you know. I said, man, if I was only that dog, my God. You know, some of us take care of our animals better than we take care of ourselves, you know. We're going to spend $50 on some pet food. I said, the devil is alive. I had to buy myself a steak just because I bought them $30 worth of food, you know. I said, I didn't deserve a steak here and there. So he was telling her, he was not saying to her, you are a stray dog. You are a crazy dog. But he was saying, you are a little dog that is owned by somebody. Uh, yes, Lord. So in that, you got to watch her response. Her response says what? Her response says but yes, but she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs, which falls from their master's table. So what happened is Jesus now, even though she did not deserve it because of who she was being a Canaanite, Jesus did not disrespect her, but he repositioned her so that she could belong to who he was sent for. I ain't got me yet. But he positioned her for so that she can belong to whom he was sent for. 
for. And she caught it. We've been telling folk all this time, Jesus is disrespectful. No, he's smart and she caught it. We just didn't catch it. And he was really telling her, I came to the lost sheep. And he was saying, but I, should I give the crumbs to their dogs? And she said, their dogs would even eat from the crumbs of their table. Uh, can you go ahead and slap your neighbor a high five and say, I know where I belong. I know where I belong. So Jesus now repositions who she is. Uh, she don't deserve it. She shouldn't have it. But now he says, baby, you belong to the house. Uh, you belong to the house. Uh, so as long as the house is blessed, you're blessed. Uh, uh, yes, God, as long as the master is blessed, you can walk in blessings. As, as long as the temperature in the house is 70 something degrees and it's 4 degrees outside because you belong to me you can stay warm yeah. yeah, which means everything that the master has, that's what I have. He positioned her to say, I know you don't deserve it because of who you are, but now I'm repositioning you so that you can walk in the blessing that you have. I can I tell you sometimes God will bring you to a point so that you can humble yourself and get before him. Ah, yes, Lord, you will humble yourself and you will get before him saying, Lord, Lord, I might be a master's dog, but I can still eat from the master's table. I slap your neighbor for the fourth time and say, neighbor, I got to get it how I can get it. Ah, yes, Lord, you can call me what you need to call me. Say what you got to say, but I'm ready for a blessing coming from the master's table. Ah, can I go ahead and preach here now? Yeah, can I go ahead and preach here now? Yeah, somebody shout, preach, sir, preach, sir. Yeah, ah, uh, yes. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, ah, uh, yes. So now we got to understand that he repositioned her to a point of humility. Yeah, and she now says, Yes, I'm a little dog, yeah, but I'm a part of this family. Yeah, so I can walk in the same blessings, I can walk in the same miracles, I can walk in the same anointing because I'm a part of God's house. Yeah. Do I have anybody in here today to say I'm not worthy of it, but I live in God's house? Yeah. I'm not worthy of the miracle, but I yet live in the Lord's house. Do I have anybody here to say I'm not worthy, but I got a God that makes me worthy. I'm not worthy of it, but I got a God that makes me who I am. You trying to figure out how I got the house I got? Just tell them, baby, I'm living with God, and I'll take whatever's falling off the table. I slap your neighbor for the fifth time and say, give me a crumb if, you, if I need it, give it to me. Yeah, I'll take the little crumbs. Uh, so the Bible says, uh, yes, so the Bible says, uh, she said, I'll, I'll take it, which falls. She said, no, he said, Lord, even the dogs feed on the crumbs, uh, which falls from their master's table. Can I tell you today uh, that in the spirit, I see crumbs falling off. Uh, somebody else was getting the blessing, uh, but something is rolling to your mouth. But you got to be in position saying, God, I'm ready to receive. But most of us are there, but you're sitting there with your mouth closed. Somebody once told me that a closed mouth don't get fed. Ah, yeah, glory is shy. But I'm here to tell the Lord today that I'm, I'm ready to preach now. I'm here to tell the Lord today. However, the crumbs got to fall, Lord. I'm ready to eat of it, oh God. However, you got to sin in my way, Lord. I'll be a little dog and I'll eat from your table. I'll be a little dog. I'm reminded in my spirit. Can I go ahead and preach now, y'all? I'm reminded in my spirit of a dog that's called a lap dog. That whenever you're eating, they'll come and sit on your lap and they'll eat whatever you give to them. God said, come and take your place and take your place on my lap because I got a crumb that'll change your life. I got a crumb that'll change your situation. Slap your neighbor and say, neighbor, all I need is one crumb coming from the master's hand. You ain't got to give me everything, but I need a crumb falling off the master's table. I don't 
don't need nothing coming from the house of Satan. I don't need nothing coming off the table of the devil. But I need a word coming from God. I need deliverance that's coming from God. Because I got a problem and God can handle it. Slap your neighbor and say neighbor. I'm ready for a crumb. So I'm positioning myself with my mouth open wide. Say, Lord, feed me today. Should I thirst and hunger no more? Feed me today. For I'm hungry, oh Lord. I got a problem in my life. And I need to be fed. I got a problem in my mind. And I need to be fed. Once 
rejoicing. Because all week long our faith has been meeting his word. Oh, the boss shot. 
said. And watch what she said. God said, I'm shifting people in Metro out of position because he's got to make way so God's people are blessed. Because he said he'll bless her seed. And you said what? Yeah! 
and if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make. Come here, Tola. No problem. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way. Stay right there. My life is in. says he's about to reposition your being to where even people are going to say what's different about you and you just got to I just got to cry and God said from this there's some things that has been in your heart he said because you tried to delight yourself he said I saw you you were trying your heart he said but because of your faith he's going to give you the desire to God said, if you knew it or not, I put the desire there. And because I, as God, put the desire there, he says, I have the burden to pass. God said, you will not have to work for this. God said, but because of your faith, I will bring it to pass within you. And from the inside, it's going to start to work its way out. Because I prophetically reach down into your spirit and into your soul. And I begin to draw out those things that God has placed there so that they are in the front of your mind. And God said, when they come, start to write them down because you're going to see. And God said, and from that, I will begin to build something out of you that no man can take the credit for. I will begin to build something out out of you that you yourself won't even be able to take the credit for. I will build something inside and outside of you that the people around you are going to live off of what God is about to give you. I wish I had a church in here. Oh, 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 no more worry. You don't have to worry no more. Says the Lord your God. No more worry. Oh, go. Draw it out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of her. Thoughts. Come out. Come out. Come out. God said the miracle that's coming is not only going to bless you, but it's going to bless your seed. He's going to bless those connected to you, says the Lord your God. And I declare that this will come out of you in three months' time. But you're going to start seeing stuff like crazy. You're going to be driving, seeing. Sleep, seeing. At work, seeing. God said he's even going to bring some discomfort to your child. Because he's going to move you. And God said that this comfort is not them, but it is me, says the Lord your God. For I am shifting you because you have outgrown the nest. You have outgrown that. He says, so I'm placing thorns there so that you're uncomfortable and you will move at my word. Says the Lord your God. In Jesus' name. Somebody out to give God praise. Hey! One crumb. One crumb. One crumb.
some blueprints and I'm going to show you some things. And he says, and he's going to bring you back to where you are. And then you're going to be able to create from where you are what you saw in the future. I wish I had a church in here. God said he's going to be able to take what you saw in the future. And God said, I'm going to place you back here so that you can think up some stuff. And people will declare that she was so innovative. She was so before her time. We don't know how she did it. And all you got to do is say, I got a crumb in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, prophetically take her to that place about March 20 years from now. In the name of Jesus, show her the idea. Show her the blueprint. Show her the pattern. Show her how to remake her. Business, how to remake business futuristically in the name of Jesus and everybody that's on her team in the name of Jesus shift them to in the name of Jesus.
Somebody say we just grow grass. grass. And sheep need grass. 